Oh, snap. Did this already start? Shoot. Um, I'm sorry, everybody. I, uh, I had thought that I needed to push the button that says start stream. And uh, apparently, uh, things got things got moving on their own there. So if any of you all were watching out there and uh, were uh, a little confused as to why I was uh, working off screen here, that is why. But it appears that we are a go now. So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Tech Tips with Drex. This is a monthly live stream wherein I break down some of my favorite tips for poi spinning and it tends to more often than not be stuff that is specifically about how to achieve my unique style with uh, with poi spinning. So this month we are covering uh, some of my favorite applications for spiral wraps. It's a thing that's come up in some of my past live streams. Um, and I figured, you know, why be around the bush? Let's just do a whole night devoted to them. Um, not the least of which, because I, I mean, I, I really, really quickly uh, uh, brainstormed a series of ideas for uh, what I could teach tonight and realized that I could easily go uh, another like couple hours worth of content there. So, but I'm only going to give you three tips for tonight, and then we're going to switch over into Q&A for a half an hour. Um, also, for those of you out there that are watching, pretty please drop something in the chat. Let me know that you're out there. Let me know that you're watching. Let me know that you can hear me. Um, let me know that all systems are nominal at this point. That would really help me out a lot. Uh, Tech Tips is, of course, sponsored by UltraPoi. Uh, they're the reason I keep jumping on here and doing these things. Thank you, UltraPoi, for supporting this. Um, and supporting my work. Uh, if you'd like to grab a set of the Orb Poi that I am going to be using in this here live stream, you can do so by heading over to uh, ultrapoi.com and using the promo code DrexFactor with a zero instead of an O at checkout. That uh, gets you a discount on your order. And of course, it supports the channel, which is super helpful. Um, also, I need to check on something here because, ah, Frick. Okay, let's see if I can do this without breaking the connection because apparently uh, I signed on to the wrong Wi-Fi when I restarted my computer. So everybody clap if you believe in fairies and hopefully I will be able to sign straight back on this thing, right? Let's see. Come on, I believe in you. Sweet. Okay, so that should have solved all of our connectivity issues there. Because uh, I was definitely getting some stream health monitors there being like, no, you do not have enough upload bandwidth to do this. Um, cool. So that's good to see. I'm going to fix one other thing right quick. Please uh, drop into the chat and say hi. Let me know that you're out there. You can still hear me, of course. But I just need to change one quick setting on the other camera. And we should be golden. All right, while I wait for you all to drop those comments into the chat to let me know that you're out there, I'm gonna crack myself a La Croix. This is a Black Raz. First time trying out this flavor. I have high hopes because I love raspberry. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm, that has uh, a little bit more flavor than I was expecting, a little bit more flavor than I usually get out of a La Croix. So <clears throat> I am definitely not seeing anybody in the chat here and that's making me a little concerned. Is there anybody that's out there right now? Um, chat rate two, huh? There. Oh shoot. Okay. Hang on. Something, something went weird with the chat there. Let me, let me fix this. Okay, so I am having all kinds of technical glitches tonight. This is hilarious. Cool, so there's the chat. You all are out there. Yay, I'm not just talking into the void, huzzah. Um, yeah, I needed to refresh that chat window, but yay. 
Y'all are real. Y'all are out there. Huzzah. Cool. Um, all right, then. Well, now that we have verified that, indeed, all of the things are working, um, let's go ahead and dive in. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of it after this week. This has been such a busy and wild week, and um, I normally uh, don't do this, but I had an idea for a new video today that I literally just dropped everything to shoot and edit. Um, normally I put way, mu way more planning and prep into shooting a video, but this was just an idea that I had off the top of my head. I'm like, oh, that'll be cool. And that's going live on Monday, but it also means that I've spent my entire day just like buried in that and I'm a little whew, right now. So thank you for bearing with me, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's switch over to uh, let's switch over to full screen here. Cool. All right. So spiral wraps. Um, Y'all probably know that I'm an enormous fan of spiral wraps, namely because I do them constantly in uh, my own work, um, and you'll see them pop up and pretty much every single flow video I ever do. Um, and they were a thing that like, wasn't a big fixture of my style for a little while. And then I kind of like found uh, a lot of the dance capabilities of them and that helped them become a bigger fixture of my style. Um, of course, when I was first learning how to do them, uh, I would do things like, I would try to like pry my hands apart in order to exit from them and everything, which, um, you know, I was using stretchy sock poi at the time, which does terrible things for the lifespan of stretchy sock poi when, when you do that. Um, and eventually I got to the point where I could get down this kind of, uh, kind of leaning into it and then popping back out. And that's what really made it a fixture of my style. Um, I first want to talk about uses for spiral wraps wherein we can use them either for really rapid stuff that is exciting for the audience, as well as for what are called suspensions. So um, we're gonna start this off by talking about something that I very rarely do, but um, I'm still a fan of called infinite spiral wraps. Infinite spiral wraps happen when you basically do a single coil of the poi uh, around the hand that it's attached to, and then you bring your hands together. Why do you do this? Well, assuming that I can get it going again, having initiated it like that, there we go. So the reason you do this is that you can just snap your hands straight back and forth like this to create instant and very rapid spiral wraps. Um, this kind of works on the same principle that things like orbitals and uh, gunslingers do, wherein when you do poi fast, your audience gets really, really, really excited. And of course, um, there's a way to do poi fast that is engaging to the audience, and then there's a way to do fast where you're just spinning out of control. But infinite spiral wraps are a good way to do the thing where you're spinning really rapidly, but doing so in a way that's in control and that your audience can really pick up on that you're doing something cool with it, right? Um, infinite spiral wraps are kind of difficult to pause in and then resume, unfortunately. You kind of have to build back up your momentum. Um, but I do like them as a great tool for getting in that really wham, bam. Uh, this is a very, very percussive version of a spiral wrap. It happens very rapidly and it's like a clump, clump, clump. So this is actually a great way that you can accent music if it happens to be really percussive. Um, you know, if you have a song that's got a really strong beat to it or like a nice drum fill, you can really set it off using these infinite spirals. I don't have a tutorial on how to do these on my YouTube, but if you all out there would like to see that, drop it in the chat and I can create a tutorial on how to do that because I do like the move. At the other end of the spectrum is what I like to call the suspension spiral. Now, the suspension spiral is kind of born out of something that has been long a source of frustration for me in that, um, you know, in, in the dance world, we have this thing that we call a suspension. That is when you find a shape and you just kind of hold it for a second, right? And the idea is, is that you can kind of let that shape sizzle and set in for your audience and everything. We don't really get to do that per se with poi. 
The reason for this is twofold. Number one, you kind of have to keep the poi moving in order to keep tracing out whatever shapes you want and everything. So if you kind of like try, then your poi just kind of sit there hanging and everything. I hate the way that looks because if the whole point is to find stillness, then the little bits that the poi are just like sitting there moving and everything kind of ruin the effect of it. Um, and of course, like if you try to just do a suspension with the point moving and everything, it kind of ruins the suspension because you have to keep moving your hands in order to keep the point moving. And that kind of ruins the effect of the shape that you're going for. Like you can definitely trace out some moves where you kind of build the tension out of something that looks like a suspension, but it's not really a suspension. It's just like a tempo change, right? The great thing about spiral wraps though, is that they really do give you a chance to boom, make a suspension happen because even though that bottom poi is dangling a little bit and everything, as you can see, it definitely stops the motion in such a way that I can make that moment sizzle and really set in for the audience. How do you make this happen? Well, it depends upon the direction that the poi are spinning. Um, generally speaking, you want to make sure that whichever hand is on top is, excuse me, is it top hand or the Ah, no, it's the bottom hand. Whichever hand is on bottom, and I'm, of course, using the turtle grip here. Um, I distinguish between two grips for spiral wraps. There's the prayer grip, wherein you have your palms facing towards each other. Um, usually, this is the one you use if you have your tethers anchored uh, between your index and middle fingers. Um, the other option, of course, is the turtle, where the palms are both uh, facing down, and you've got a thumb sticking out to either side, right? I personally prefer the turtle. Um, I've seen people using both with a variety of grips. I find that the turtle works a little bit better for this right here, which um, has been helpfully dubbed the key grip by uh, Ryan Dean Duchamp. Um, and thus, whenever I make that spiral wrap happen, um, what I'm really looking out for here is trying to make sure that the hand on bottom winds up with that poi sitting on top of both of my hands. I kind of want to create a little shelf for that poi to land on. The poi on bottom is not nearly as important. If I miss the poi on top, I don't have a clean exit out of this, unfortunately. Like, if it's just left hanging there and everything, I can do the little twist to get out, but as you see, you know, it, it results in one of those moments where one of the poi is a little sluggish coming out. If, on the other hand, I can really nail that shelf, boom, and catch the, uh, the, the poi attached to the bottom hand on top, then when I snap my arms out, I can always nail that really percussive boom moment coming out of it. And I think that that's really important. If you're going to do the thing where you go into a suspension with the poi, it also has to be one of those things that you can come out of it instantly. You have to think of it almost as like a dime stop and coming out of it on a dime as well. Um, and of course, since you're switching up, depending upon direction, which hand is on bottom each time in the turtle, um, that means that you wind up with a different poi on top every time. There is an exception to this rule. We've covered this in some previous uh, live streams that I've done on meteor spinning. And that is that uh, if you're doing this from a meteor perspective, that is a two poi, one hand perspective, the way you nail that suspension is that you have to make sure that it's always the thumb end that winds up on top. Always, 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 it's the thumb end. Uh, you might be asking, well, doesn't it switch up depending upon which direction the player's spinning? And the answer is no, it's always the thumb end. And the reason for this is, is that you're actually switching which direction your thumb is pointing depending upon the direction that the spiral wrap completes in. So if I'm spinning clockwise here, when I go in for the wrap, I'm gonna wind up with my thumb pointing to stage right and therefore, thumb end is going to wind up sitting on top of my palm. And if I go back the other way, that is counterclockwise, my thumb is pointing off to stage left. And again, the thumb end poi winds up sitting on top of the back of my hand. So in the palm of my hand going clockwise, counterclockwise on top of my hand. And generally speaking, you do have to um, rotate your wrists just slightly in order to make that landing soft enough that it really like uh, it, it, it just like lands as the suspension and the stop that it's supposed to be. Because if you don't do that, it kind of bounces around a little bit. 
And again, that makes the coming out of it a little bit harder and it makes it more likely that you're gonna wind up in that situation where you fail to catch the, uh, the, uh, the poi that needs to go on top and either you need to correct for it and jiggle it around a little bit, or you need to, um, uh, you, you uh, come out of the spiral wrap in a little bit more sluggish of fashion, right? So those are two extremes in terms of dynamic for spiral wraps. You can either take the infinite spiral, which is very percussive, it's very fast. It's also kind of a pain in the butt to get into, especially if you have thicker tethers. And again, the way you get into that is you just wind up with a short amount of tether from each side in between your hands as you go into the spiral wrap. And the complete opposite, you do the suspension spiral wrap, wherein the poi completely stop as you're spinning them. And thus you get a nice little suspension out of it, yeah? Cool, all right. Second thing we are going to explore here is doing plane changes. Now, um, you don't have to be able to do the suspension spiral in order to get to plane changes, but it does help. Um, here's why. So um, when I get to one of these suspension spirals, I can then switch to moving in a vertical plane here and go into like say a corkscrew, do another spiral wrap and try and bring it down into vertical. Now you might've noticed that when I did that spiral wrap in horizontal plane up here, I wound up in a position where I had to make some adjustments once I came down. Um, that is unfortunately a risk that is carried in doing the spiral wrap from your horizontal plane. Um, since there's no up per se there, there's less of an ability to kind of make the poi land on a shelf. Um, so how do we get around that? Well, to be perfectly frank when you, with you, when I go from a horizontal plane to a vertical plane, what I'm actually doing there is I am taking that moment right before the spiral wrap finishes and boom, switching into the vertical plane off of that. I'm not actually giving the spiral wrap a chance to finish before uh, I switch the plane there just to kind of avoid that problem. Really, this is just the same thing as like doing the spiral wrap back and forth in vertical planes. I'm just taking it off of a horizontal kind of place and then switching as best I can into a vertical place off of it. Um, the reason for this just being that, uh, you know, it, it, it avoids uh, some of the unpleasant elements of, of having to hope that the placement of the poi was close enough as you bring it down, like there. Um, it's more likely that you're gonna wind up with one of the poi in between your arms. And, you know, it's not impossible to exit from that, but it's not exactly fun either. So when going from the vertical plane to the horizontal plane, I always recommend trying to do this from the suspension spiral. That way you've got your time to go up and kind of adjust and get the poi moving in the way that you want to. Coming back down, however, you wanna take the poi from the moment they wrap and switch back as soon as you possibly can, uh, just to make sure that gravity isn't messing with you too terribly much. Again, from the vertical plane, right as the spiral wrap is about to complete, and you can feel it right about as they're at the end of their, uh, at, at the end of the spiral there, you take them into the vertical plane. If you're really, really steezy about this, and I believe that some of you are, what you can do here is you can actually come down right at the end of it and fake the, um, uh, the, the suspension spiral. How did I do that? Well, basically, I know exactly what position my wrists need to be in in a vertical plane in order to get that suspension spiral. I'm looking for that position to pop up on the horizontal up here and I move my hands down the moment it lands in it. So technically speaking, I didn't do this suspension spiral out of the horizontal plane. Once I got to this position, I dropped into the vertical plane and now that gravity is officially a thing that I'm dealing with again, hey, hey, guess what? Turns into a suspension spiral. It's a good way to fake the idea that you did the suspension in horizontal plane, even though you really didn't. And of course, the effect is the same as if you had gotten the suspension in your horizontal plane. Namely, as you're coming down here, boom, 
you can still play that for a suspension. Isn't that grand? Um, timing there is so tricky. It's so tricky. But uh, I, I, I swear that if, uh, if you can really, really nail that, it will absolutely floor your audience. Yeah. Cool. The final thing I want to talk about is um, just all the possibilities with doing one-handed spiral wraps. I do this all the time when I'm doing my meteor stuff, and specifically because it frees up my other hand for a number of purposes. Um, I think of once I've freed up the other hand, I'm essentially operating in a place where um, I can use this hand as uh, an instrument of expression. Um, there's something that they talk about a lot in the Levywan community of what they call illusion hand. That is the idea that this hand is having an impact on what the prop connected to the other hand is doing. So for example, as I'm coming out of one of these suspension spirals here, I can boom, have my hand come out or go in to imply that it has a relationship with the poi out or in. And of course, with a little bit of practice, you can really whoop, sell that connection in such a way that it looks like they have a direct connection with each other here. Um, and of course, you can do fun things like if you go down a horizontal plane, you can boom, make it come in and out like an explosion. Again, going from that, whoop, uh, from that horizontal spiral wrap into the suspension spiral by taking it down very, very quickly into the suspension spiral position to make it look like that's what you always meant to do. Of course, another thing you can do is what I would call the emphasis hand. And the emphasis hand is this idea that you're going to kind of like use the other hand as a special effect in some ways, like one, two, three, boom. And that's when you come out of it. Or you can do things like after you make your spiral wrap, you can come out in a really, really dramatic fashion. Use that other hand in such a way that it adds emphasis to what you're doing. You can add a lot of drama here by using that other hand in a variety of ways. Um, one of my favorites, of course, is to do the thing where I go into a horizontal plane and I kind of reach across in this lovely dancey motion and everything, or um, do the same thing off of like a vertical one, getting in my Freddie, Mo my Freddie Mercury moment here and everything. Um, for those of you who've seen the video I made last year um, for my birthday, uh, this is 40. Um, the thumbnail for that was very, very deliberately chosen because um, I'm a huge Queen fan and I wanted to do something that was going to kind of quote some of uh, Freddie Mercury's body language from on stage because he is without a doubt my favorite singer of all time. But coming back to our, uh, our, our the use of the other hand with spiral wrap and everything, um, play around with this, see what you can do, because sometimes you can kind of coax something out of there. Sometimes you can add emphasis. Sometimes you can do something very small. Sometimes you can really emphasize the emotion of what you're doing. Like say, um, there was a video I recorded to maps by yeah, yeah, yeah's last year, wherein at the end of the spiral, I kind of like almost came in to protect myself and everything to make it a really dramatic and vulnerable moment. And then when I came out of it, it made it feel like that much more of an emotional release. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to throw out there about the use of the other hand in the one handed spiral wrap. Um, yeah, just like play around with this and find the different things that you can do with that other hand. You now have an entire appendage that you can use for expression in various ways. Chef's kiss, or maybe who are you looking for? Like there are so many things that you can do to add a little bit of emphasis and character work with that other hand once you have it free. And of course, finding that suspension with the spiral wrap is such a great way to make those moments land, right? Um, play around with this a bit. There's a lot of clowning. There's a lot of pantomime and quite frankly, just a lot of stagecraft that can go into that. This is part of why I use this trick so much now is 
I've just found it so useful for being able to, you know, make all kinds of creative things happen with my other hand and really make it register with the audience what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend. And on that note, let's go ahead and switch into Q and A now that I have talked at you all for uh, a good long time about uses for spiral wraps. Uh, you feel free to ask me any questions about any of the things that I've showed off. Feel free to ask me any questions at all, no matter what. Do you want to know my opinion of the state of things in the world right now? Uh, do you want to know things about Florida's history? Do you want to know things about me personally? I am open to all of them. And once again, uh, a huge thank you to uh, UltraPoi for sponsoring this Q&A session and making it possible for me to come to you each month. Um, Again, you can grab a set of these Orb Poi by going to ultrapoi.com and using the promo code DREXFACTOR with a zero instead of an O at checkout gets you a discount and it helps out the channel so everybody wins. And with that, I'm going to switch back over to my perch here so I can get a better look at the questions y'all are asking. And you all can get a better look at my sweaty, messy face, especially especially as I'm kicking back the LaCroix here, yeah? Oh, also, um, just to put it out there too, if any of you are able to, um, you can use the super chat function. That is that little button that looks like a dollar sign. That tips me, that comes directly to me. Nobody takes any cut of that. Um, and any questions that come through with the super chat, I will prioritize and answer first. Otherwise, I will take them in the order that they came in. Uh, let's begin, shall we? Uh, Fantasia Deep says, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well, albeit a little out of it today. Thank you for asking. Skylar G says, yo, Holmes, hello. Zach says, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too. Nick Von Eschen, you're good, Drex, glad to hear it. Quentin Von Dale, loud and clear. Fantasia Deep says, we hear you, fantastic. This is before I rebooted the chat. Zena says, hi, I love Poi. My two-year-old daughter loves Fire Poi, probably for the effects. I would have loved Fire Poi at two as well. Uh, I wish I knew that, that that was a thing at two. And Skyler G and Zena are saying we're back. Zena Brock says, question, how? I don't know how, quite frankly. I ask, that, I ask myself that question every single day. Zena Brock follows up and says, oops, Fantasia Deep. The chat doesn't show somehow. Yes, I fixed it. He just says, hello, Skyler G, I'm here. Zena Brock, chat's not showing. It is now. Uh, I'm going to get through all of this. Um, Vladimir Slovakia, huh? Okay, so I'm going to guess that your name is pronounced Vladimir uh, Palinchar. Uh, love from Slovakia. Love from Washington, D.C. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Craig Bruner says, thank you for making all these videos. I've learned a lot from you. I appreciate that. Oh, hooray! We got a super chat. Thank you, Hita. Thank you for these wonderful lessons and sharing your tips and tricks with us. And thank you, Hita. The, uh, the, the, the tip means a lot to me. Uh, it, it really, really helps out. Thank you so much. Thank you for your appreciation and thank you for tuning in. Um, let's see here. Craig Bruner, thank you for all making all these videos. I learned a lot from you. I'm so glad to hear it. Skylar G is asking for an infinite spiral wrap tutorial. Okay, I'll have to, uh, have to stick that in the queue then. I'm not sure the name of the best description. How do I move where the poison side plane and it makes an infinity loop? I am not actually sure uh, what that move is either. Um, are you talking just about like a two beat weave? Cause I guess like the path of this does come out looking like an infinity pattern in the end. Um, but yeah, I uh, throw me some clarification in the chat because I don't know what you're specifically referring to there. I'm sorry. Zena Brock says, I've ordered my poi. I'm so happy to start learning. I'm so happy for you to start learning too. Uh, congratulations on your order. I hope you love them. Um, Javier Olgan says, I wish I had access to this sort of thing when I was just starting out. You and me both, friend. You and me both. This is why I do it. I create the things that I wish that I could have used at the time. Dakota Hunter says, get hay. Cool. Get hay to you too. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline Hennard, I bought an Ultra Poi Poi six years ago. That is how I found you. No kidding. That's great to hear. Yay. 
Uh, Zena Brock says that looks cool. Quentin Van Dale. I don't dance as much as Drex does when I do poi, but I do like to do that. Come at me, bro. Gesture with my free hand. Yeah. Isn't it good for that? I don't, I don't know if I've ever used it myself, but uh, now that you mention it, maybe I'll have to put that in the rotation. Sonic Hill asks, do you clean your props regularly? Um, short answer, no. I can't remember the last time I cleaned my props. Um, not even my fire props now that I think about it, which I should do regularly. No, I, I'm, I'm very, very hard on equipment. I, um, I use and abuse all of the things, and I do so constantly. And that is one of the reasons why I am so grateful for props that are hardy and put up with my abuse. Um, I think I've had these now for a um, couple of years, maybe, uh, and they show no signs of wearing out. Um, I don't know if it's visible, but um, even like the pattern on them, the little um, the little texture on the grip is still there, which I would have sworn I would have worn that away by now. But no, no, they uh, they they are uh, pretty chill. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm appreciative for props like this that I can use and abuse and never clean and never do any upkeep on. And they're still, they're still kicking it. Um, this poor rope though, I don't know if you can see it, but it is, um, it has been really, really, really abused over the years and, um, has definitely started to pill at this point. I should probably replace that at some point. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I I appreciate props that I can uh, that I can beat the hell out of. Um, yeah, I uh, to my great shame, and I can't really show you this, but uh, I, I I don't even clean my computer really, and there's a, a nice layer of dust on my laptop keyboard there. Um, I use uh, I use a Bluetooth keyboard simply because there's there's more flexibility in where I can put it. Um, but yeah, there's some ways in which I'm a neat freak, but my props are not one of them. Uh, Quentin Van Dade, and the one handy spiral wrap that is. Yep, I figured that was the case. Skylar G, thoughts on spinning to dubstep? Um, I mean, my answer to that is really my answer to spinning to EDM in general, that I just, uh, you know, sure. Um, I'm not really a big EDM fan. Um, and, and I've, I've, I've mentioned this in the past. So to be perfectly frank with you, when it comes to spinning to EDM, could be house, could be, um, trap, could be dubstep, could be a whole bunch of different stuff. It, it doesn't make any difference to me, sadly enough. Um, I definitely, I, I remember when dubstep was at its peak back when, in my early days of going to Burning Man. Um, and you know, there was some, there was, there was some of it I actually did like, but, um, yeah, just by and large, when it comes to EDM, it just, it, it all sounds the same to me. Like, um, you know, the, the electronic beats and everything, it just, um, it, 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 it kind of all just sounds like a machine making noise to me. So dubstep's no different to me than any other electronic music genre. And so, Whenever it's playing, it's just the background and I make it work, you know? Um, I've had the strangest experience spinning at fire festivals because, you know, there are people who are extremely picky about what they spin to and they will, they will complain all day and night about like, oh, well, you know, that DJ sucked or this DJ sucked or there should have been more of this or more of that. And it's always so wild to me to listen to that because I'm just like, like nothing that I hear is up my alley. I just make do with whatever. And it's always weird to me hearing that kind of talk going on because it's like, you know, we're here. The point is to be here together. If you want the music you want to listen to, like you go to a music festival. The, there, there you get to control who's going to be on the lineup and what you're going to be listening to and everything. If you need to have a specific genre of music to spin to in order to get your flow on, I don't know if a flow festival is going to be the right place. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have always been very grateful though, because historically at Fire Drums, whoever was the kind of music lead there would usually do me a solid and they would play one heavy metal track for me uh, in, in, on either Friday or Saturday evening. 
And it's like, I would wait the entire festival season just to hear one metal track that I could spin out to. Um, so yeah, it, it, the, the flow festivals music wise have always been a, les a lesson in patience to me. And I wish they were for other people too. <laughs> that was a much longer uh, answer than I think you're anticipating there. Zena Brock, uh, question, can you use light up poi as a basic beginner poi? I don't see why not. Um, I would steer towards using light up poi that are relatively soft, um, simply because you are gonna be hitting yourself a lot when you first start off. There's no way around that. So like pod poi, for example, are a really, really perfect fit for getting started. Um, for younger kids, I recommend spin balls because they're also lighter and, um, you know, it's not just softness, but also mass and, um, spin balls are definitely really good for, for little kids that are learning and pod poi are good for teenagers slash adults. Um, so yeah, aim for something that is soft, but yeah, there's, there's no reason that, uh, light up poi can't be used for basic beginner poi, unless you're talking about fire poi. I would not use fire poi as basic beginner poi for several reasons. Um, not the least of which is, you know, there's almost always metal hardware that's a part of uh, of, of uh, sets of poi. And also to like, <laughs> spoilers for the video that's coming out on Monday. Um, the economics of poi construction are such that LED poi are pretty much always going to be less expensive than fire poi, with some exceptions. Like the, the really, really advanced ones, like um, the the poi that use pixels to display pictures and everything, um, those those are always going to be more expensive than fire poi. But you know, for single pixel uh, LED poi, they're they're always going to be cheaper than fire poi because uh, the labor costs associated with making fire poi are quite high. Um, so that means that if you're getting into a set of fire poi for your beginner poi, you're going to be paying more than you need to. And if this is a hobby that you're not entirely sure that you want to devote yourself to just yet. I might recommend something that has a little bit lower price tag um, just so that if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, you're, uh, you, you've, you've plunked down less money to make that happen. Um, and if indeed you find that it is a good fit for you, then um, definitely invest in a set of fire poi for sure. But no, I wouldn't use fire poi for, for basic beginner stuff as you're just starting off. Uh, Dakota Hunter says, Hey Drex, I love spinning to dubstep or really any catchy song. I love, I, I love spinning to catchy songs too. Uh, the, and the songs that catch my ear are all over the map. Like, um, you know, it's funny. I very, very narrowly avoided, uh, so the, the flow video that went live this past week was set to a Tegan and Sarah song that was just so catchy and like put a bounce in my step as I was listening to it walking around that um, I, uh, I, it, it, I couldn't not do it, but there was a close runner up for that. And it was an avenged sevenfold song from the 2010s that I can't remember the name of now, but like, it was also just such a fun song that I was like, I haven't spun to metal in a while. Like I should do this song. And then, then the Tegan and Sarah song came up and I'm like, no, it's going to be this one. But uh, yeah, maybe, maybe next month I will throw on a catchy metal song. Uh, I, I've now had back-to-back -back months where the title of the song was the same as uh, a punk or metal song. And those who know me well and know that that's where my musical tastes lie, which is like, oh, I was expecting Nine Inch Nails or, oh, I was expecting, um, uh, I was expecting Bad Religion. And <laughs> that's not what came out of the speakers. So I, I think I need to uh, kind of get back to being on brand there and, and uh, spend some metal and punk in the coming months. Um, Fantasia Deep says, uh, do you maybe have a tip on how to get an infinite corkscrew to look clean? Mine is somewhat tilted to one side. An infinite corkscrew? Do you mean an infinite spiral wrap? Because corkscrews are kind of infinite uh, in themselves. Hmm. Yeah, uh, if you could add clarification, that would be really, really helpful. Somewhat tilted to one side. Hmm. Yeah, uh, clarification would be helpful there. Johnny Maserati asks, are you growing a mullet? No, I just have been lazy and I haven't gone to get my hair cut, um, which I meant to make that appointment today. And of course I didn't because I went and made a video instead. But um, 
yeah, sometime in the next week, all of this is going to come off. And uh, I'm definitely going to tell the gentleman who cuts my hair, hey, I do not want to rock the mullet. Can you make all of this go away? Yeah. Uh, Quentin Van Dale says, uh, I think the move AD means is the snake body tracer. Er? AD means who is AD? Oh, um, infinity loop. Okay. Snake body tracer. Yeah, I don't know. AD, if you can chime in, that'd be super helpful. <laughs> Uh, Dakota Hunter just got my Orpoi a couple weeks ago. Woot! And I love them. Not sure if I like them or my Podpoi more. Yeah, and you know what? That's going to be completely up to you. What you use them for, what feels better. Um, and different Poi will feel better for different tasks. Like, you know, I, I feel bad that I got these amazing sock Poi from um, uh, Katya Stakanova several months ago, and I barely used them simply because you can't do contact with them. And also... Um, it's been pretty windy in DC and, um, the sock poi pick up the wind much more than contact poi do. And so I hadn't been using them. And then lately there have been a couple things that I've been finding I can't do with the contact poi. And I've been going back to the sock poi just for those tricks and everything. So you might see more, uh, sock poi stuff coming out of me. So you might find that your pod poi work really well for some stuff and that the orb poi work really well for other stuff. And that stuff changes over time. Yeah, see how it works out. Skyler G, do you still use your vision poi? If so, thoughts on the recent update? I haven't done the recent update yet. I have been too bloody busy, but it is on the to-do list. Um, and yes, I still do pull them out uh, on occasion. They, for obvious reasons, are not my primary set of poi to play with. Um, but yeah, you know, one thing I really appreciate about um, having a prop wall uh, is that, you know, my poi are very accessible and every once in a while, I'll just have a moment where I like want to flow and I look up, I'm like, Oh, I haven't played around with those in a little while. I'll pick them up and, and give them a whirl and everything. Um, ironically enough, the ones that that's been happening the most with lately are my flow mojo poi simply because like I had forgotten at a certain point, just how comfortable, um, flow cord is like really, truly, it, it's just one of those things that um, for as much as we talk about rope pilling and, you know, being really abrasive and everything, you know, it, it using flow cord just feels like such a luxury sometimes. Um, and I can't wait for flow toys to come out with their uh, single pixel led knobs. That's a thing that is hopefully happening in the nearest future. Although I haven't heard any updates on that in uh, probably a year or so. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for that to complete that package because at this point, um, I generally don't put into common rotation any LED contact poi um, simply because um, gunslingers are such a big part of my style now that if I'm working with handles that aren't visible, the, the effect of the gunslingers just, just gets lost. So can't wait for those handles, flow toys, whenever, uh, whenever you're ready to drop them. Um, but yeah, I do like the Vision Poi. Can't wait to play with the new update. We'll see how that works out. Um, hey, Drex, how can you check when you need to charge the Orb Poi? Um, to be perfectly frank with you, I always... So I say this. This is another one of those do as I say, not as I do things. I, I try to always charge my um, Orb Poi after I have a flow session with them, period. Now, the funny thing about that, of course, is my last flow session with them was either last night or the night before, and I forgot to plug them in. And it's actually been stressing me out a little bit, like leading up to this live stream being like, oh snap, are they gonna make it through the whole live stream? Hmm. Question. Uh, so I guess I guess we'll see here. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't know how to check the battery charge on them. I just, after I've used them for two to four hours, I just plug them in um, and kind of figure that I need to do that more often than not. Yeah. Uh, Zena Brock asks a uh, question. What do you think of cheap poi from eBay or Amazon? Um, not a fan is the short answer um, for a couple of reasons. Number one is that uh, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, some of that cheap poi is kind of, oh, 
Jacqueline Hennard, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. You are the bestest. I really appreciate it. If you have a question that you want to throw in there, um, I am happy to prioritize that as I'm working on the answer to this one. Um, okay, so um, here's the thing. A lot of the cheap poi that have flooded eBay and Amazon are companies that are based out of countries that don't really recognize um, that don't really recognize patents and uh, uh, and uh, copyright as it is practiced in the United States. And so in a lot of cases, they basically have just copied designs that other people have created and like put them out in a cheaper fashion. So like the boards won't be as good. They'll be more likely to fall apart, um, won't take shocks as well. Um, and those are also sales that are being taken away from people that I know and I like here in the United States, like spin balls or flow toys. And um, I would rather the money be going to them. You know, you, you can save five, $10 on your poi, or you can support an artist that does a lot for the community. Um, I think I, I would say that, re and I know of course it's a convenience thing and it drives me crazy that we have to make these choices. And I know that a lot of people are wrestling with less than stellar means. And I don't mean to say that like, oh, you're a bad person if you, if you uh, buy from uh, some of those cheap manufacturers. But if you have the means, please support the people that support our community. It's just good for everyone. And I will get off my soapbox. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Howard says the link you sent on Patreon is dead. The link to what, sir? Oh, the link to the video chat. Shite. Ah, uh, hang on. I gotta fix that right quick then. Um, y'all, y'all, uh, hang out with me for just one second while I am, whilst I'm doing that. Oh, that's obnoxious. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh, I wonder why that happened. So weird. Two seconds. Okay, and now I'm coming back. Johnny, thank you so much for letting me know that. The actual link is now on my Patreon. Huzzah. Oof. Okay, uh, hopefully we get some more people tuning in now then. Um, sweet. Uh, Amazing Lights sell a nice pair of beginner poi. Yes, I agree that they do. Um, yeah, uh, and there's many places that you can go to for beginner poi. Um, e Amazing Lights does have a good set of beginner poi too. Etsy is a good place for beginner poi. Yeah, um, you got to be a lot of Etsy shops don't last that long. And again, part of the reason is going to pop up in my Monday video that um, in a lot of cases, things like sock poi and contact poi are really labor intensive to make. Um, so people don't, and I made the same mistake in my business. I never factored in the labor costs um, when I priced out my contact poi. Um, and that was part of the reason why I wound up in a position where my business was not quite sustainable. And I think a lot of Etsy shops do that same thing. There, there are exceptions though. Um, so if you find a shop where it seems like the price is too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. <laughs> um, Sonic Hill, I'm hoping I can find a way to reduce labor costs on fire poi construction. I hope so too. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that ever since. So I had a conversation with Chad Bennett a couple days ago and that inspired the Monday video. Um, trying to think of like how we can re-engineer fire poi to be less labor intensive. And I have some ideas myself too. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it's a very, very interesting problem. Uh, much more so than I originally thought. Uh, Radioactive Undead says, are Podpoi as easy to do moves with as Orbpoi since the Podpoi are like tier shaped and weighted slightly different? They're easier for, well, they're about the same for most stuff as uh, Orbpoi, um, except for Contact Poi tricks. Contact Poi tricks very clearly are easier with the Orbpoi. Um, I will say that sometimes when you're starting off, it's helpful to have lighter sets of Poi um, simply because they make less of an impact. And in that case, Podpoi are better because they're lighter than Orbpoi. Um, but I don't know that I could say that outside of contact poi, there are moves that are easier to do with pod poi than with orb poi. I would say that they're roughly equivalent. And for most poi moves too, it's like, um, you know, you, you have to get a little ways down the road before um, the construction of the poi makes that big a difference on how easy it, to, it is to do moves. Uh, Fantasia Deep says, a corkscrew that has three beats up and down. Not sure how to call it, but definitely a corkscrew. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. I think I do at least. Here, let me switch over and you can verify for me. So, I think that what you might be referring to there is this dealio where we put a buzzsaw in the middle of a corkscrew and that adds an extra beat going up and down, um, which looks really, really cool when you take it, oops, excuse me, when you take it from the side, because it, it kind of looks like a DNA strand to me in many respects, you know? Um, and all this really involves is that, um, that moment when you're coming down, when it is your right hand going down, you keep it above your hand for an extra beat to switch it into a buzzsaw. And likewise, when you're coming up, um, you keep it under your hand for an extra beat. And that results in this lovely three beat pattern to the corkscrew, which yes, admittedly is really cool. And since I've been doing so much horizontal stuff, I should be doing more of that. Thank you for the reminder. Um, how to make that not look lopsided? That's an interesting question. Um, I would say like really focus on keeping your hands as close together as possible as you're doing this move. And like, I, I would think that the lopsidedness would happen if your hands like move very far to either side, which, you know, granted could be an interesting way to present the move. And um, this starts getting into territory that we would refer to as being like a helical, um, which is a, a form of toroids. Um, but yeah, try and see if you can keep your hands on your center axis the entire time. Or if you are going to move side to side, make that a part of how you're presenting the move. Uh, make it a choice rather than a choice being made for you, if that makes sense. And of course, if anybody wants to see a tutorial on that version of the corkscrew, let me know in the chat and I can put that in the queue as well. And if you're talking about a completely different corkscrew, also, please let me know that as well. I'm gonna make sure that I'm answering this appropriately here. Um, Flowcord is fantastic. It seems that they stopped selling it though. Yeah, they, they switched over to rope, but if you can, they still have the fatty flow cord for their contact poi. And if you can get it, I highly recommend it. Stoffer, thank you, Drex. You are so welcome. Jacqueline Henner, no question, just love your work. Yay, and I love your contribution. Thank you so much for supporting me in the channel. Um, what do you think of Argentinian K8 88 millimeter poi? I have never used them, so I do not have an opinion on them. Uh, Johnny Howard, to this stream, another person was waiting in the other link. Gotcha. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, hopefully they find the new link on Patreon because I did just post it. Sorry for the mix up, my bad, my bad. Okay. Um, is the July flow circle theme determined yet? No, it is not. Um, I can't remember if the poll got posted this week or it's gonna get posted next week, but um, no, I have no idea what the flow circle for July is going to be on just yet. I'm waiting for y'all to vote on it. So I can uh, come up with drills around the topic that you all vote for. If anybody out there is curious what the flow circle is, um, this is a reward tier for my Patreon supporters at the $10 a month level. Basically the idea is that um, I upload 
a short five minute lesson every Wednesday that features a drill that you can do for 15 minutes a day. One of the biggest complaints that I heard from people is that they don't have time to practice. So the stuff in the flow circle is intended to be something that you can do with very, very little time, no more than 15 minutes a day that will help you improve on your poi spinning. So if that sounds like a great idea, you should have, head over to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and sign up at the $10 level for the flow circle. And uh, you'll be in good company. I think at this point, like half of the people who signed up for my Patreon are Flow Circle members, which I appreciate. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Christian Knoll. I started spinning when you started the COVID series at the beginning of the lockdown. Yay, welcome. And recently spun fire for the first time last week, and it was amazing. That's fantastic, Christian. I am so glad to hear that your journey has taken you to a place that you are enjoying. Huzzah. Thank you for all your videos. You are more than welcome. Um, and it actually means a lot too to hear that you've gotten to that point just with the work that I've put out with this quarantine videos because the whole point of doing that was I wanted to bring new people into the flow world and it means a lot to know that you were one of them. Yay, welcome. We're happy to have you. Zena Brock says, thanks for the info. info. I'm from Australia and have less money than most. I will be getting cheap poi from eBay to learn with and then a decent set from an actual company when I can afford to do so. That's fair. And to be fair too, there are not a lot of companies based out of Australia. That That's a tough choice to make, not the least of which because shipping right now internationally is an absolute nightmare. So I don't fault you for that one bit. Um, I hope that you enjoy them and that they inspire you to get deeper into the art. Yes. It's also kind of a pain in the butt uh, because, um, you know, you, uh, you you wind up in that place where, you know, Home of Poi is shutting down. And that was kind of the supplier for so much of uh, Oceania and Southeast Asia and everything. So it's, uh, yeah, what the, the, the company that would be local to you is shutting down. So that's a pain in the butt. So, yeah, I, I don't fault you for going the eBay route there at all. And again, I want to emphasize, if you go buy cheaper poi off of Amazon or eBay, you're not a bad person. But when you can afford it, please, please, please support the artists in this community. Support the people that are creating good products in this community. Make sure that they can make a living doing it, and we're going to wind up with better products. Um, anyhow, Fantasia Deep. Yes, that one. I think I'm trying to avoid hitting my face. Um yeah, keep your hands further away from yourself. Thank you, that gave me an idea on how to do it differently. Fantastic, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, yeah, also, great horizontal plane move. I can't I can't believe I had forgotten about that. With as much horizontal plane stuff as I do, that is a crime, Drex. You should not have done such a thing. Um, Sokar Siba uh, says, Hey, Drex, I used to run a small fire group here in New Mexico, and since I wasn't really a poi teacher, I sent dozens of students your videos. Huzzah! Always found them the easiest to follow. Thank you, Sokar. That means so much to hear. Um, you're actually not the first troop leader I've heard from that has said that, and it means a lot to me to know that I have become a resource that so many people can depend on. It, 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 really, it really means a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, Johnny Howard, when are you going to make another fire video? Have you ventured into contact fire? Haven't seen any of your fire videos. Um, yes, I will make another fire video one of these days. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a, so there are two challenges right now. Um, so I do all my fire stuff in the courtyard that it, like the apartments in my apartment complex are clustered around. There's a little paved area back there, which is great because it is, um, it, it's not easy to see it from the road and it's paved. So I don't have to worry about like fuel spills getting into the soil or anything like that. One of the apartments across the courtyard from mine burned down a few weeks ago. It is literally not the entire building, but just that one unit is literally a smoking hole in the apartment building. And so I have been avoiding doing fire back there. Um, 
because I figure it probably make people a little nervous. That said, fire will be coming back. It'll be coming back on the sooner side. Um, maybe maybe a fire video for next month. Um, but yeah, like the the fire tests that I did for um, uh, for the fire blanket safety video. Um, I mean, there, there's a reason the camera was pointing the direction it was because behind Mufasa and I was this gigantic pile of burnt out rubble and like charred things from an apartment. Um, and we both felt super weird doing the tests there. And you'll notice that um, the final test that we did uh, was in a completely different location because we both were just like, you know, this, this, this doesn't feel right. Um, and so we shot the final fire test across the street at uh, a tennis court in the park where I usually flow out. So when the courtyard has been cleaned up a little bit and it feels a little less weird, um, spinning fire right next to an apartment that's burned down, there will be another fire video coming. I will take this as a request for that and try to make that happen sooner rather than later. So thank you for asking. Um, yeah. Not exactly what I think you thought you were getting into there, but yeah, I, I will, I will do a fire another fire video here in the next uh, in the next couple months. Um, I have not ventured that much into contact fire. I acquired a set of Kevlar gloves um, for uh, Christmas this past year specifically so that I could try it out. I don't think the effect with contact poi kind of works the same way with fire. Um, so I'm kind of skeptical of it, but I'm going to try it out and see what I think nonetheless. Yeah. Um, moving on. Kurt Hobbs, thoughts on the Chauvin sentencing. Whoo, boy. I appreciate both that you asked me something that is very timely, very newsworthy, and something that is much broader picture. Um, short answer is, um, I feel like I need to do more reading myself because, um, I knew that the sentencing was coming up and I actually hadn't read up, uh, both on what the maximum and minimum sentences were for the charges that he was found guilty of, um, and, or the, um, the mean, sentence given out for those charges in Minnesota to see how he compares to that. Um, you know, if it's one of those things that like the mean sentence given out is like 10 years and he got the, the 22 and a half that leans more to the favorable side of things. But I am going to say that like the number of charges that he was found guilty on 22 years seems a little short to me. Um, but I am not a legal expert. And again, I need to do my research on this. I have not done it so um, as of right now. So take all that with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, I um, off the top of my head, it feels a little bit short. It could it, like, it feels like it, I, I think we could have made out worse there for sure, but it still feels like it was a little short. Um, but I, I need to read up a little bit more to get an idea of where that sits um, in terms of uh, common sentences for those charges in Minnesota to, to get kind of context for that and everything. Thank you for asking, though. Um, I think that that trial was incredibly important, but at the same time, we do have to view it in the context of you know, it's very, very easy to paint Chauvin as like a rotten apple or um, somebody who is an outlier. And I think that one of those lessons that has become increasingly clear in the past year, and I mean, let's be real here, we've been, we've been people have been saying this for years upon years upon years, um, going all the way back to, I mean, I'm old enough to remember the, the, the Rodney King trial, um, you know, it's not a rotten apple, it's a rotten system. And regardless of the sentence that Derek Chauvin gets, which hopefully will serve as a signal to other police officers that they can be found guilty of murder and they can, you know, face consequences for it. 
Um, I also think that we just, we, we need police reform very, very badly. Um, and regardless of what sentence Derek Chauvin got, that really needs to be a huge priority. Thank you for asking that, Kurt. Um, Chris Miller asks, now that I'm going to pivot completely off of that, that, those were two really heavy answers back to back. Um, so Chris Miller, uh, I absolutely love your videos. You will help me figure out the mistake that I was making by watching your breakdowns. I was able to see where I was making my mistake and how easy it was to correct. Huzzah. I am glad to hear that. That is definitely a, uh, an important theme to me. In, um, in, in creating my videos is I want to give people um, like, here's the thing. I, I, I really, really, really want to, if, uh, I love Nick Woolsey to death and his videos inspired me to make videos. But at the same time, I feel like his videos are about having fun learning poi. And there are some times when like, you know, you can have all the fun in the world, but you're not making the breakthrough that you want to. And when I try to put together videos, it is always from a place of saying, like, I want to give you the resources that you need to get from point A to point B. So error correction is a big part of that. And I'm so glad to hear that you are getting that from my videos. Yay. Uh, Johnny Howard with the wow reaction there. Not sure what that was in reaction to. There have been a lot of wow things in, in the past few minutes. Uh, Skylar G, I've been avoiding spinning fire because my state is in drought and I don't need any Karens coming after me. <laughs> so legit. So legit. Um, yeah, I, I, I would wait. I would wait. Um, yeah, it uh, would wait for the weather to shift and for climate conditions to get better for sure. Um, there's, there's no shame in doing that. And that just means that you're going to be in better shape the first time you pick up a set of fire poi. That's not a bad thing. Not at all. Um, Fantasia deep. I guess my favorite horizontal move looks like two horizontal stalls above your neck, hands under chin while turning. Not sure what that is even called. Uh, are you talking about the pirouette that I do with my poi kind of like pointed out like uh, the bolts in Frankenstein's neck to either side. Uh, if so, that, that is a personal favorite of mine too. Uh, Johnny Howard says he only has to serve 15 before release. Hmm. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Kurt Hobbs. That was a tough question to answer. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Here's a tip. I appreciate the tip, Kurt. That means a lot. That means a lot. Um, yeah, I, uh, I appreciate both the question as well as the tip for answering because um, I, I will be the first to admit I am a little out of my depth there, um, but I appreciate uh, I, I appreciate your appreciation for the answer there, and I think it's responsible that I'm admitting that I'm out of my depth there. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Johnny Howard, he only has to serve 15 before release. Yeah, I mean, you, you always have to factor that into whatever sentence people are given for anything. You wind up, uh, you, you, you wind up uh, realizing that they're not going to serve out that full term and factoring that into how you look at it. And, you know, as, as well, that should go. Um, Chris Miller, when I started spinning, all we had were glow sticks on strings. I step away for about a decade and come back. All the toys I wish I'd had back then and a phenomenal instructor to help learn new stuff. Yay. I hope that I am the resource that I wish I had when I first started. And it sounds like I am for you. So that makes me happy. Um, Kurt Winsler says, hey, Drex, just wanted to stop by and say thank you for all that you do. You're so welcome. Poi has become one of my favorite things. And your videos have been a huge part of my learning process. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you so much. I, it means a lot to know that the work that I do has an impact on people. Um, thank you for showing up and tell me, telling me that. Satori says, have you been loving your recent poi dance sets? Yes, I have. Boy, howdy, have I ever. Do you have problems monetizing your performance videos containing music? No, and here's why. Because the way I monetize them has nothing to do with YouTube ads. Um, so... The way I monetize those videos is that I get sponsorship for them. Um, Ultra Poi 
pays me to do each of those videos every month. And also the promo code that I uh, throw out there during those videos and which I'm going to throw out there again because UltraPoi is the sponsor of this live stream. Um, so if you want to grab a set of those OrbPoi, head to UltraPoi.com. Use the promo code DrexFactor with a zero instead of an O to help out the channel. Thank you. Um, so um, I both get paid to do the video in the first place, as well as I also get paid affiliate earnings on every time somebody uses my code at checkout. So I do monetize those videos, just not in the traditional way. And it worked out really, really well that... Um, you know, it's uh, it, it it's one of those things that um, life finds a way. No, so, uh, that uh, it it uh, I'm happy with that arrangement. I'm really happy with that arrangement. And you know, the thing is, because those videos were being sponsored in that way, that freed me up to be able to do things I wouldn't otherwise do because I used to always search for like copyright free music for um, my flow sessions because, you know, I wanted to be able to put ads on them on YouTube. Um, and it meant that I, I could select whatever song I wanted, whatever song was most inspiring to me. And I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, that's pretty rad uh, when, when, when all's told. Um, so I really appreciate UltraPoi making it possible for me to dance to whatever I like. Oh, $15 super chat from Chris Miller. Thank you so much, Chris. That means a lot. That means so much. Thank you for hanging out with me and for your very generous tip there. Um, so Satori, the short answer is the way that I have monetized those videos has meant that um, I, I don't uh, worry about what music I have in them. Um, and that honestly is great because it's less stress for me and it means that I can just explore whatever music is inspiring me at any given time. And that really means a lot to me. It's pretty awesome. Um, Johnny Howard, pirouette. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And Fantasia Deep says Frankenstein's pirouette in that case. Yes. Word. That move hence to forth will be called Frankenstein's pirouette and I am here for it. Um, now I need to do a, uh, a, a video tutorial with that title <laughs> just to get the name out there. Um, which is funny cause I never thought of it as Frankenstein's pirouette before this live stream. So thank you for inspiring me in that way. Um, let's see here. Uh, Aurelie Sinclair, is it worth going outside to practice even though it's raining? That is the question. Um, I still practice in light rain, but you know, it's also one of those things that where do you feel most comfortable? If you feel most comfortable staying out of the rain, staying indoors, then absolutely do that. Um, like me personally, I hate practicing in the wind. Like, um, I don't know if you can tell, but I am a rather svelte individual and the wind just rips the heat away from me. It is deeply unpleasant for me to be out in. So, um, I usually spin indoors on days that are super rainy or super windy. And if, you know, that's, if that's the weather you're facing, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't practice indoors inside. That's totally fine. Practice wherever you are most inspired to explore your flow. I just tell people to get outside because I think sometimes a change in location can change your energy and help you focus. But if you feel more comfortable practicing inside, please practice inside. It is not about where you practice. It is about doing the practice. It is about the amount of time that you devote to the practice. And quite frankly, the things that make you want to practice are the things that you should pursue. So if spinning inside makes you want to practice more, spin inside by all means. Nothing Polished Poi says, have you talked with Malcolm or anybody from Home Poi about his situation since your video? No, no, I have not. Um, I was actually expecting somebody from Home of Poi to like jump on the comments there and be like, oh, you've got this so wrong. That has not happened. Um, I, I've never had direct contact with Malcolm. Um, something that didn't make it into that video because it's hearsay um, and not something that I know for sure is that one of the factors in Home of Poi kind of heading towards a shutdown is that apparently Malcolm, I, I have been told 
Malcolm is not in the best of health. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but um, I do know that his kind of engagement with the wider community has declined over the course of the past 10 years. That could be part of the reason why. Um, I have never had a direct route to communicate with Malcolm. Um, and again, part of the reason I made that video was just that like all of the stuff that I cite in that video is stuff that anybody out there could have put together. There's nothing there that's privileged information, aside from maybe the fact that some of the manufacturers that um, he, whose, whose props he was selling um, were not always happy with the arrangements there. Um, but like, aside from that, everything I said in that video is really, really easy to find information. And part of what I wanted to do with that video was tell people, it's like, hey, you know, these are puzzles that you can solve too. You can look around for this information and put together the pieces on this yourself. And that'll help you get, that'll help you not just have an idea of what this industry is like right now, but also, um, you know, uh, it, it'll help you know where it's going. And I, I think that those are both helpful things if this community and this industry are important to you. So collect the data that's out there. Collect the stuff that people freely talk about. Read the tea leaves and see if you can put together a picture based upon that. And I, I think you'll I think you'll be surprised sometimes by the thing that, that you can learn from that. Um, like, you know, uh, again, going back to the video that's going live on Monday, um, I had long known that the profit margins on fire props are extremely small. And given that I've seen what wholesale prices are for, um, uh, for Kevlar and chain and things like that. Um, and, and Technora, you know, something wasn't adding up there. And the only thing that made sense was labor costs. And, um, it was really, really helpful to talk to a fire poi manufacturer who could confirm, yeah, actually it is the labor costs. That That's the whole problem here. And that, you know, the labor involved in making fire poi is incredibly difficult to mechanize or automate. So that means that every set of fire poi is made by hand and that drives the cost up. And it also makes it like, so here's the thing. Um, I don't do sponsored fire poi videos because no fire poi company can afford to sponsor them. Like I can't even find a company that makes fire poi to give me a promo code because even giving up the 5% commission on every sale is more that they can afford to give up for making sets of fire poi, which it makes me really sad because I would really, really love to help them out with their businesses. But at the same time, like, you know, it, it's also one of those things that if I were to spin a set of fire poi, it's really hard to tell as I'm spinning them, you know, who made that set of fire poi, um, with the possible exception of like the static rope poi, like juggling calling, I could see uh, having a case for being able to do sponsorship in that way, although I don't know if they could afford it. Um, but yeah, like uh, the LED companies can afford to sponsor me, the fire poi companies cannot. Um, and a big part of that is just that the labor costs make it such that the profit margins are so small, they can't afford to give up any amount of a sale in order to, uh, in, in order to even raise visibility, you know? Um, let's see here. Donnie Howard, how much to sponsor a fire for you video? <laughs> I was apparently on top of it. Oh, and I see that you wrote down below, no, I'm in send you money, you make a fire poi video. I'm a person. Okay. Um, so let's talk one-on-one -on -one about that. Um, I know we have a message thread going. Um, I'm happy to do a sponsored fire poi video, and especially if it is a person in the community that just wants to see me spin fire. I'm, I'm, I am happy to undertake that. Um, for complicated reasons, um, I don't know that I want to make public what sponsored videos cost uh, for me right now. Um, and of course that's all open to negotiation and everything, but part of it is also too that I, 
I want to preserve the privacy of the companies that I work with um, simply because I don't have their consent at this moment to share that number with you. If I were to ask them and they were to say, yeah, we're happy to have you share that number with people that I'm happy to do it. But um, yeah, I, let, let's talk one-on-one -on -one via DM and uh, we can work that out because that would be a wonderful arrangement. I would love to do that. You're my starving artist. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be your starving artist. Um, let's see here. Orly Sinclair. Oh, and thank you again, Chris Miller, for the super chat. Orly Sinclair says, I have low ceilings. Yeah, me too. Um, so fun fact, I am six feet tall. My ceiling clearance is eight feet. Um, if you watch my videos very, very carefully, all the ones shot indoors in my studio here, you will see that as much as I enjoy getting my hands high above my head whenever I'm flowing outside, I never get to do it inside. Rats. So yeah, now that I've said that, look out for it in uh, my indoor videos and you will never be able to unsee it. Heather Green, is there a correct way to hold your poi? I have troubles keeping my non-dominant hand in similar plane with my right side. Um, so the things that you want to do there are, um, uh, you, you, you want to do some plane correcting exercises. Um, one plane correcting exercise that I'm a big fan of, um, actually, I'm gonna to switch to the full body camera at this point. So one exercise I'm a huge fan of is to just get the poise spinning in wall plane and walk around it, keeping the plane of the poi in the exact same spot no matter what. This is a variation on this exercise, which is called globing or orbing, where you switch the orientation of the plane in relationship to your hand. Um, I kind of decided that I want to stop teaching that exercise because it encourages people to like constantly be changing their plane orientation. And I want people to get used to the idea that the plane doesn't change. It's the movement of your body that does. And so this exercise accomplishes the exact same thing, but it's more about moving your body than it is about um, uh, kind of having the poi plane move around your hand. So that is one thing that I would highly recommend. In terms of a grip, I'm a big fan of what is now called the key grip. The idea being that I'm essentially pinching the, the, uh, the tether just uh, above the handle with my index finger and my thumb. And I'm pinching it right in between these joints on my index finger um, like, like I'm holding a key and I'm about to put it into uh, a keyhole. That's the grip that I use. Um, there's no such thing as a right grip per se. Um, but at the same time, I get asked that question so much that I'm just at the, at this point, I'm just telling people, this is the grip that I use and that I'm a fan of. So use this. I'm, um, Nothing Polish Poi says, I'm not going to say it is true, but a friend of mine has gone and seen him recently and it seems to be a contributing factor. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe I should reach out to Malcolm. <laughs> we'll see if he wants to talk to me after after I've made that video now. But yeah, I, I, I can always reach out and say, uh, and, and, and see if he's interested in talking to me. That might make for a really interesting interview, actually. Anyhow. Um, Natalia Yusanova, I love you, friend. I love you too, Natalia. Uh, I just got notification you are live. Just wanted to stop by and say hi. And in the spirit of poi, you helped me unlock a ton of partner poi. Yes, that I had forgotten. I'm so glad to hear that. I have been so sad that I haven't been able to do partner poi on account of the pandemic. Um, I've been, I tried many times to meet back up with uh, Tashi to keep on working on partner point and everything. And there's always been something that's gone wrong, um, which, you know, sometimes it's just not available. And then there's been a couple major life events that have happened that have made it difficult for us to get together. But I'm, I'm hoping again in the near future, because I really enjoy doing partner point with her. And I just enjoy doing partner point in general. So fingers crossed, I get to get back to that world soon. Heather Green, PS, I love your training app. I have a training app. Oh, do you mean the spin balls one? Thank you. You're, you're so welcome, I think. <laughs> Chris Miller, what size head would you recommend for fire poi to make a good weight? I know some are super heavy and vice versa. Um, I just use three inch monkey fists for pretty much everything. And that does me just fine. 
Um, I'm not one of those people that likes super heavy poi, especially because I dance so much with it. I prefer to have somewhat lighter poi and shorter tethers because they give me the capability to be more maneuverable and for uh, make it easier for me to make the poi work in contact with the dance. I don't have to fight them. Chris Miller, I believe mine are medium size. Cool. Nothing polished poi. That's so sad. I do not know what that is in relation to. Johnny Howard, no, I mean, I send you money and you make fire poi video. I'm a person. Cool. Yes, I'm about it. Uh, Fantasia Deep, just wanted to say thank you again. I've been watching your tutorials for three years and you're the most consistent and helpful poi resource for sure. Thank you so much. That's the goal. I'm glad I'm making the goal. Glad I'm making the goal happen here. Um, Alonzo Macias. Things that you love of Flo Fest Flo Arts Festivals. I love meeting people. I love hanging out with people. I love the conversations that happen at them. Um, yeah, for the most part, it's making contact with people that I really love about the Flow Arts Festivals. Um, and really, too, just seeing friends that I don't get to see very often otherwise. Uh, in so many cases, I feel like Flow Arts Festivals really just come down to, like, an excuse to hang out with your friends for a weekend and it, so much else just winds up kind of being window dressing on the rest of it. But yeah, it's getting to see friends. It's getting to hang out with friends. Um, sometimes it's getting to try out new products. Sometimes it's getting a chance to meet somebody that I really respect and I think is interesting. Um, but yeah, I think it's the connections. I, 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 I definitely think it's the connections that I love the most. Uh, Johnny Howard, that's it. You're my starving artist. I'm here for it. Uh, Satori, ah, uh, thank you. That makes sense. The music seems to just bring it all together beautifully. I used your code and ordered, got a set of orb poi on the way. You're my hero, Satori. Thank you. Can't wait to try them out. I cannot wait for you to try them out. Uh, do please follow up and send me a message and let me know what you think of them. Seth Halftown says, hey, Drex, you slay it, brother. I do try. Thank you so much for noticing. Um, Chris Miller, no, Thank you. Glad I could contribute. The last year has crippled many people financially. I'm blessed to be a trucker and haven't suffered like others, so I try to help others. That is awesome. That is awesome to hear. I'm, I'm glad to hear that um, you have not been in a position where the past year has been a difficult one. Um, I also feel very lucky that um, in the past year I have uh, managed to keep my head above water financially and, and even grow my business during that time. A lot of people haven't. So I'm, I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm a very lucky individual and it sounds like, sounds like you are too. Johnny Maserati, do you have another job? Just wondering, <laughs> is this enough of a job? No, seriously. Um, no, I, I do not have, uh, I do not have another job really. I, I sometimes consult with people, um, especially around social media stuff. Um, but I don't have anything regular that I would refer to as a job. Uh, flow arts and creating content and my channel are my full-time job. I should say introducing people to flow arts and poi spinning is my full-time job because the content that I create is not the product. It is just how I like let people know that I exist so that they can take advantage of the services that I offer to teach them how to spin. So no, this is, uh, this is really my only job. And uh, I feel very, very lucky that I'm able to pay the bills doing it. I feel very, very, very fortunate about that. Um, goodness, so we have come to 8.30 my time, which is a half an hour more than I thought I was going to go for this. So thank you all for keeping me busy and asking me such great questions. I'm going to do a last call for questions. This is the lightning round. I'm signing it off at 8.35. So if you have any other questions you want to get in under the wire, send them my way. And in the meantime, I'm going to do another shout out to UltraPoi. Thank you so much for sponsoring Tech Tips with Drex. Um, in order, if you want to grab a set of those Orb Poi and hallelujah, they are still lit. I am so going to charge these after I get off here. Um, you can do so Go over to ultrapoi.com, use my promo code. It is DrexFactor with a zero instead of an O. I'm going to put that in the chat right now. This supports the channel, and it supports a company that supports me. So do it, please. Um... 
Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Ultrapoy, for sponsoring this live stream and giving me an opportunity to sit and chat with you all tonight as I enjoy this black raspberry LaCroix, which I'm a fan of this. Um, Johnny Maserati sent a lightning bolt. I'm going to guess that that's for the lightning round here. Uh, Aurelie Sinclair says, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladed swallow? I don't know. Is it a European or an African swallow? Inquiring minds want to know. Also, thanks. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, any other questions as we wind down here? Um, any, and, and also too, any suggestions for videos or topics that you would like to see me cover in the future? Perhaps ideas for what I can do a future tech tips on? Uh, what are some things about my technique that you would like to learn for yourself? Um, and also too, um, are there topics that you would like to see me do a video on? Uh, things in the flow arts community. Um, questions about how to do particular tricks or maybe a what comes next video. Drop them all in the chat. I am here for each and every one of them. So uh, do let me know what you all want to learn out there because uh, that's how I get a lot of my ideas for what videos to make for you all. I, I come up with a lot of ideas myself, but um, also getting requests from you all is a big part of how I come up with content. So keep, uh, I help, help me help you is the long and short of that for anybody who remembers that movie. Um, Kurt Hobbs, top five black magic transitions is a cool video idea. I think, yeah, that, that's actually not too far off of an idea that I had a while back. Um, yeah, I can, I can throw that on the to-do list. Um, trying to think of, of what some black magic transitions that I can think of are, because I definitely have things that I look at as like, you know, how did that just happen? But, um, what I consider to be a uh, jaw-dropping transition in that way might be different from what other people consider to be a jaw-dropping transition. Um, yeah, I think uh, at one point there, there, there were these two video ideas that I had that were like competing in my head of, you know, top five, you know, magical poi tricks versus top five, um, Poi tricks with wow factor. And I wound up making the one about wow factor because I just thought the title was better. But yeah, uh, Black Magic Transitions works too. Um, Aurelie Sinclair, dance poi stuff in general. So it's funny you should mention that because um, in the past couple months, I've almost been keeping like a journal of stuff that I've been exploring with poi dance. And like, it's stuff that is really, really, really fundamental. Like, you know, say doing in-spin flowers versus anti-spin flowers. How do they feel? What's the emotional connection that you have with an audience as a result of doing in-spin flowers versus anti-spin flowers? And timing and direction as well. Um, you know, in many ways, something like together opposite feels more stable to me than split time opposite, which feels very unstable because together opposite has the same kind of symmetry that the human body does, whereas split time opposite has a completely different kind of symmetry. Like human bodies do not reflect top bottom, they reflect side to side. So having something that involves, you know, top and bottom symmetry, and that has the hands coming together to either side, which feels like somewhat unbalanced to me, I feel like has more tension inherent in it. Um, than, uh, than say doing something in together opposite. So I've actually been toying around with the idea of just like doing some poi video essays, talking about some of these things that I've been exploring in terms of like, what do these things communicate and what is the impact they have on your audience? And it is definitely going to be like, both stuff that is deep and intense as well as stuff that is like, Oh yeah, I never thought about butterflies in that way. So maybe, uh, maybe I will put that to the top of the queue and, uh, and, and start work on that. Cause 
I, I definitely have notes and notes and notes in my phone as I've been uh, kind of playing around with that and tons of video too. Like I, I've actively been exploring the idea of like, can I make the same throw look angry? Can I make it look happy? Can I make it look, you know, pensive? Can I make it look sad? Like how exactly do I do that with poi throws? Um, so yeah, I can, I can put that to the top of the queue there orally. Um, and it should be said that I, I, I hope that by working through some of that stuff, it helps improve my own poi dance and like helps me convey to the audience more what I want to. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Hobbs, crossers to isolations is a good one. That's a hard transition. Good Lord. I do like that one as well, but that one is hard as all get out. Yeah, I, 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 I could put that on the list. I see what you, okay. I see what you mean now in terms of black magic transitions. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Natalia says, Point up and thumbs up. Cool. I'm going to take that as a positive thing. Johnny Maserati, message retracted. I did not get a chance to read that before you retracted it. So uh, Aurelie says, that sounds very interesting. I'm glad you like. And Hita says, would love to see more beginner poi combos. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I can make more poi beginner combos happen. I, I will freely admit that a lot of the combos that I come up with tend to be stuff that I'm playing with in the moment and that winds up being more advanced stuff, but I can definitely come up with more beginner combos for sure. As well, I should, because I want to give you all more that you can work with. And on that note, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you all so much for tuning in for your wonderful questions. And of course, for all the amazing super chats, one more thank you to ultra Poi for sponsoring this video, for sponsoring this live stream, I should say. Uh, and giving me a reason to hang out and talk with you all. The, I think I'm doing this the third Friday of every month. Um, so thank you, UltraPoi, for sponsoring this video and uh, giving me a chance to chat with you all. Uh, everybody, have yourselves a great evening. Stay cool out there. Um, have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that uh, Monday video on the economics of making fire poi. <laughs> Yeah. Anyhow, uh, peace out, everybody. Sending much love from DC. Thanks.